cyber attacks on the rise, and Biden just hands Putin a paper with our tenderest targets. Tonight, one of the world's most controversial hackers has a warning for the USA. We are in big trouble. Sabu Hector Masagur is a former hacker behind the anonymous Lulz hacking collectives. They attacked places like the Senate, Visa, MasterCard. They called themselves hacktivists. In 2011, Hector hacked the FBI, and he got caught. He became an informant, and after serving time in jail and being banned from the Internet for years, he turned things around. Now, he hacks for good, to help people. Here with why the U.S. should be worried, former black hat hacker Hector Mossager. All right, Hector, what is the United States missing with this new cyber war it seems like we're now involved in? Well, it's a great question. Um, we do not have enough people to uh, deal with the threats. Um, we don't have enough law enforcement that actually understands cyber. Um, and all of the organizations that I've worked with around the, uh, the nation, and, and we see the news all the time, um, you know, still haven't reached a certain threshold in their security posture. So we're going to continue to see these attacks just happen every day, and it's going to get worse and worse. It'll be exponential. So remember we launched Space Force. Do we need, like, a new cyber war department, like, a separate from the Department of Defense, just to beef up with a bunch of hacktivist people like yourself, maybe ex-black hat hackers, to show us what to do to handle these Russians? Um, well, we do have CISA, right? And there's other organizations around there. Uh, we do have the computer emergency response teams and all sorts of organizations. The thing is that we kind of need to work together. Um, I think that for a long time, the U.S. government has relied heavily on federal contractors, which I have no problem with um, for the most part. Um, I think they've, they've improved over the years. But we still need uh, more outside help, that's for sure. So from a strategic perspective, when Joe Biden hands Putin a list of our top 16 targets that we don't want the Russian hackers to touch, does that sound like something maybe we shouldn't have done from a former hacker's perspective? Well, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, but the truth of the matter is, and I'll be very honest with you, uh, most of the uh, sophisticated actors will go around those targets. So, um, you know, yeah, they may have a list of 16 targets or more, um, but then they will find equivalents, uh, counterparts within the same industries, and just target those and still create the same uh, sort of chaos. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, you know, what we need to be concerned about. So when you hacked the FBI, how'd they catch you? Well, it wasn't necessarily attacking the FBI directly. It was, again, going around, right? You, you go around the target. Um, and they called me because of bad operational security. I mean, I really didn't care to get caught. Um, and that's kind of, it led to my downfall. I think at that point in my life, I wanted to be caught and, um, you know, start my life anew. Um, but, uh, you know, there's one thing I would have to say, Mr. Waters, is that a lot of these threat actors, um, you know, their modus operandi shifts. Uh, pretty much daily. Their strategies and techniques, tools and procedures um, are constantly lifted from open source technologies or from each other. So it's very hard to make attribution claims for a lot of these attacks, which is problematic for not only the government, but for yourself as a journalist. All right. Well, thank you very much, Hector. We appreciate it. And we're glad that you're on the straight and narrow now because thank you, you could have hacked me and I don't want any of my goodies getting out. <laughs> it's a <laughs> world of hurt. Thank you so much. We appreciate sure. it. Take care.